So I'm doing this series as I keep noticing players make the same mistakes over and over and over again. They're not going to be full map guides, as if I'm honest, I don't really know every part of every map and all the playstyles for every tanks. These are positions that I play myself all the time and they fit my playstyle. And I want to share my knowledge as I notice people misplaying these positions, as I said, over and over and over again. Or Lakeville, as to what tanks you should play in the valley, well, you need essentially something that can be held down, whether it's a TD, a medium, or a heavy. And it should have a minimum, I want to say, of 7 degrees of gun depression to use a few of the different angles. 5 and 6 degrees, 5 especially, is very difficult to work. 6 is workable, but you're going to have a lot of trouble finding the right angles and positions and where you can wedge yourself up. So from north spawn, to access the valley, you have to cross over the mound from C2 to E1 for you to be safe. Now why this way? It's the safest way, as from the Red Mart route, you have the chance of being shot at from a hull down tank as you're crossing, as you can see here in the replay. Once you get into the E1 position, I would suggest to peek the lower side of the rock first to catch people who are crossing over from the base still, or did the wrong crossing from the south spawn, which I'll explain later in the video. The green marked area is where you have vision depending on how much you extend and over peak. When peeking, you have to watch out for the camping triangles in the base, and they're usually in the marked positions here. Please never play in the area marked here during the beginning. You're guaranteed to get screwed from essentially every angle, you have no cover, and the enemy has the high ground. Once the game is more developed, and you know where the enemy is, you can use the area to over peak, but at the beginning, you will get fucked up there, guaranteed. You can pick the higher side of the rock, but you have to be very careful of the angles the enemy tanks have on you. You can fight people right in front of you, like in the replay, or the people camping in the back from the previous TD bot positions that I mentioned before. As you can see, I killed the 704 here. Now, once you've cleared the tanks in front of you, the bush above the rock becomes usable to try and outspot and shoot the enemy triangles. So you've cleared the valley, what's next? I'll give you the answer to the three most common scenarios. Scenario 1, you've won the valley, but the enemy has destroyed your allies in the city and is close to pushing your base. In this case, you do not push through the valley, but you make your way back to your base and take one of two hull downs, depending on how much time you have to retreat, and fight the enemy from there. An extra cheeky position here that you can use to knock down the tree and then peek, sometimes hull down, if the enemies are far enough. Scenario 2 can evolve into Scenario 3 as well, and you'll see why in a sec, but for Scenario 2, you've won the valley, your allies have won the city, what do you do? You carefully drive through the valley, avoiding TD fire through this route, and make your way to the hull downs in H2 and J2. From there, your allies from city and you pincer the rest of the enemy tanks. You have two routes as drawn here on the minimap, and then normally, you finish them off. Scenario 3 has the same start of valley pushing, however, your allies and enemies are still duking it out in the city. So for you, you do your best to clear their base and then continue to flank them from behind in this direction. When pushing, be wary of enemies coming back to defend and people in the middle lane or corner as they can get nasty cross shots on you. So from south spawn you go from J2 to F2, driving over the mound, which is in the middle of G2, you do not go around the outer side of the rock, as there you will get caught out and screwed over. As soon as you reach the F2 position, you pick the lower side of the rock hull down in order to shoot people who are making the wrong cross from north spawn. Much like from north spawn, you can pick the upper and the lower side of the rock. When picking the lower side of the rock, you have to be very careful of the TDs camping in C2 and the people who did make the wrong cross into E2 and are hiding behind the rock. Here are the two positions marked on the map. When picking the higher side of the rock, you have to be careful of again the TDs sitting in C2, but also the ones sitting in B1, A1, and A2. Now, again, like from north, you'll be fighting either those people in the back, or the people that are close to you in the E1, E2 squares. Please never play in the area marked here during the beginning. You're guaranteed to get screwed from essentially every angle, you have no cover, and the enemy has the high ground. Once the game is more developed, and you know where the enemy is, you can use the area to overpeak, but at the beginning, you will get fucked up there, guaranteed. 
For your three scenarios from South Spawn, they're essentially the same as the North, just mirrored. However, uh, in South Spawn, you have a few different positions that you can actually defend your base from, which I will show in a sec. For scenario one, your enemies have won the city, they're pushing your base, you've won the valley, and uh, you just make your way back, you do not push forwards. Now, once you've made it back to your base, you have a choice of two general areas. You have the J2, J3 squares, with these two positions marked here, or you have the option of going towards the K-line, where you have the K2 and K3 hull down. Now, from the K2 and K3 hull down, you can see most of the K-line from where the enemies will push, and if you push a little bit further forwards, you will see people that have flanked from the middle lane and you will have an angle on them. For scenario two, your allies have won the city this time and you won the valley. Now, what do you do? You push through, well, you actually have multiple lanes to push through. You can push on either side of their big mound or you can actually drive up and use their C2 position against them from people that are trying to fight you from B3. Once you've cleared the B3 area, you might have enemies sitting in A2 trying to fight hull down. Now, for you to get to them, you will have to cross the B2 square. When crossing that square, you have to be very careful of the enemies that could potentially be sitting in A5. But in this scenario, if your allies in the city have won and have already pushed, it is most likely that that area is already cleared. But do be careful from the A5, A6 squares. So scenario 3 starts like scenario 2, you push the valley, however, your allies are still fighting the enemy in the city. You've pushed the valley, you've cleared the B3 square, potentially the A2, however now you have to really watch out for those A5, A6, A7 squares. You can play the hull downs in B3 and A2 if you do manage to cross there, but the A line is what you have to clear in order to flank the enemy. And then from that, you just push on and you flank. I hope the video was useful. Maybe you learned something, a new position, a new angle. Hopefully you can try them out for yourself and hopefully you'll have a better time on the Lakeville Valley. This is the first of the videos that I'm doing. So hopefully as they come along, I'll polish up the editing and the different styles.